God is good. I say God is good. And all the time. God is good. And all the time. I want us to rise up on our feet. Jesus is our living hope. Jesus is our living hope. I remember um, um, when uh, Pastor Reba, it, it's just wonderful to be home. This is home for me, okay? And I, it's just lovely to be um, with mom and dad. And um, I remember calling um, um, mom on Thursday. No, I, she spoke to me that I was going to minister. I was like, what am I going to What am I going to say? What am I going to say? So I just felt to send a text. So I sent a text to Pastor Reba. And um, when she, um, I didn't get the, te- the response quickly. And all of a sudden, I went to my phone and I checked, and she had already texted me the news of what had happened. But as she, no, before that, um, she texted me because I said, "What am I going to preach?" She said, "Just preach whatever God lays on your heart." It, as I just read that text, I just heard Christ, our living hope. Amen. That was the message I got: Christ, our living hope. And hearing about the, what has happened this week, this is a time that we focus on who God really is on who Jesus is. He is our living hope. Amen. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Precious Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for this time. Jesus Christ, our living hope. Yes, you are. So Father, we just want to thank you for this morning. We bless you, Lord, that you are our living hope. And we just want to thank you, Lord, for this time. Father, we just commit our hearts to you at this time. We ask that our hearts will be steadfast and immovable in you. We pray that your Holy Spirit will come and minister your peace to every heart at this time. Thank you for your word, O God. We pray that your word will come like fire, O God. Your word will come like a two-edged sword, O God. O Father, Lord, and bring hope and comfort to your people. Father, we just want to thank you for this time. Blessed be your holy name. Father, take your place in this house, in Jesus' name. And all the people in the house said... Amen. Amen. Let's be seated in his wonderful presence. Amen. So our text is taken from 1 Peter chapter 1. Okay. 1 Peter chapter 1, and I'm going to be reading from verse 3 to 9. So if you'd like to open your Bibles, on, can I have the reading on here too? Please, thank you. 1 Peter chapter 1. Christ, our living hope. So I'm just going to read from verse 1. First Peter chapter 1, I'll just start from verse 1. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the pilgrims of the dispersion in Pontus, Galatia, and Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, Elect according to the foreknowledge of God, the Father, in sanctification of the Spirit, for obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace be multiplied. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that does not fade away reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time in this you greatly rejoice though now for a little while If need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Whom having not seen you, Sorry, whom having not seen, you love. Though now you do not see him, yet believing. Everyone say believing. Believing. You rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory. 
verse 9. Receive the end of your faith, the salvation of your soul. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. So we can see the Apostle Paul, the power which, uh, sorry, uh, Peter, I've been trying to practice that for some reason I was thinking of Paul, okay? But we can see uh, Peter um, was writing to the saints at that time. The power with which Peter aims to equip these persecuted saints in this passage is the power of hope. If they or we are going to live and love like Jesus commands us to, even in times of great sorrow or times of great distress and worry, then they and we as well must be filled with living hope. Yes. Can I hear an amen? amen? We must be filled with living hope. Yes. Yes. Peter's letter has been called the gospel of hope. A great characteristic of the Christian life is that we live in hope. Christian hope sustains in the midst of difficulties. For hope is born out of a full confidence, belief and trust in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Living in the light and life of Jesus' resurrection does not exempt us from life's evils or life's ills or tribulation. Yet, resurrection hope does diminish the debilitating power of the distressing trials. We, we cannot only endure, but we can live victoriously as we experience the life and joy of Jesus Christ, which is a foretaste of divine glory. Yeah. Can I hear an amen? amen? To be honest, when I was preparing this message, uh, th different songs were just coming to me. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heirs of salvation, purchase of blood, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, the living Christ is the source of our new birth and our living hope. You see, if you have a living hope in the living Christ, you can deal with past failures and present difficulties because of your future blessings. God's glorious best for you lies ahead. I, I remember an adage that said that the future is bright, the future is orange. I'm like, no. The future is bright because the future is Jesus. Amen? Yes. Hallelujah. Anticipating what God has in store for us can release joy in our soul and put a smile on our face. Hope gives us confidence and lets us live with inner strength for we know that one day, one day, come and say one day, one day we will be radically different than we are now. Our brother has gone to be with the Lord. He is probably rejoicing in the Lord. He's looking at you all and thinking, amen. These are my people. They are rejoicing in, you know, in God's presence down there. But we are going to see him one day, amen. Yes. We are going to be radically changed just like he is. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. So comf let's comfort one another with these. So I'm going to look at this under three headings. Number one, a living hope. Number two, a future hope. And number three, a present hope. Hallelujah. So let's go back to verse three. It says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercies has begotten us again to a living hope. He has begotten us. Another version says we are born again into a living hope. 
So if you're a child of God, if you've given your heart to Jesus, you have been born again into a living hope. Can I hear an amen? amen. It's a living hope. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have been born again into a living hope. Yes. Yes. You see, Peter penned these words about 30 years after Jesus, um, Jesus Christ's death and resurrection. He was writing to encourage the persecuted Christians of Asia Minor. Peter addressed those who are feeling discouraged and displaced, depressed, or in danger, and tells them that they need to take hold of their living hope. Amen? Amen. And for us, we need to take hold of our living hope in Christ. Amen. 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 We need to take hold of our living hope through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We are born again into a living hope. Yes. Amen. You see, Peter begins the, the main body of his letter in verse 3 with praise for the wonders of salvation. The greatest thing that can happen to anyone is to be born again. Amen. To be born again into this living hope, the wonder of salvation. He says, blessed be God. Why am I blessed? Why are you blessed? Because we have a blessed God. Yes. Our God is blessed, so he gives birth to blessed children. Amen? Yes. We are blessed. Amen. It says, blessed be God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercies has caused us to be born again into a living hope through the death and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. God has caused us to be born again into a living hope. Yes. The new birth results into a living hope. This living hope, as I said, is based on the living, resurrected Christ. Hallelujah. First Peter chapter 1, let's read verse 21. Verse 21 tells us, Who through him believed who through him believed in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. Hallelujah. Yes. You see, the li our hope and our faith is in the living God. Yes. It's not in things that perish. It's not in gold or silver. It's in the living God. You see, we have been redeemed, not by corruptible things. It tells us even in verse 18 and verse 19, this is how precious we are. Verse 18 and 19 says, Knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things. That's how precious our redemption is. We were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by the tradition from your fathers. Verse 19. But ye were redeemed with the precious blood of Christ. Can I hear an amen? amen. By the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish or without spot. If you want to know how valuable a thing is, you check it out by the price you pay for it, isn't it? I mean, if you went to, I'm, I'm not going to call any shop, but if you went to a shop and you paid a pound for something, <laughs> if you paid a pound for it, you know, you get home, you won't even take it out of the bag, you probably just leave it somewhere, isn't it? Yeah. But if you paid a uh, thousand pounds for a diamond watch, when you get home, in fact, as you are driving, you are thinking, of where, where am I going to hide this thing, isn't it? You're thinking of where you're going to hide this precious diamond when you get home. Whereas the one pound one, you will just, you probably even forget it in the car. So the value of something depends on the price we pay for it. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. We were redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Yes. So that's what determines our worth. Yes. It's not your position. Yes. It's not my position. It's not by me standing here that determines my worth. It's not by our possession. That's not what determines our worth. What determines our worth is Jesus Christ, the precious blood that was shed for us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This, I keep saying this. You see, it's not L'Oreal. I'm not worth it because of L'Oreal. I'm worth it because of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. So what is a living hope? What is the hope we now have? that only the, resurrected, the resurrection of Jesus Christ can give us. You see, a living hope is a hope that never dies. Hallelujah! Yes. 
A living hope is a hope that never dies. If you're a child of God, say, I have a living hope. I have a hope that never dies. Amen. It's a hope that never dies. This hope is like living water flowing from the perennial spring, which never runs dry. Amen. Christ in us, the hope of glory. His spirit is like living water flowing through us. That's the hope that we have. That's the hope that never dies. Such hope springs from the very fountain of God himself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It springs from the very fountain of God himself. We heard that he's God all, but he doesn't need, he's God all by himself. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. I love that. A hope that never dies. Yeah. You see, the Christian's hope in Christ is as certain and sure as the fact that Christ is alive. Amen. Amen. Here, the word living means that the believer's hope is sure. Your hope is sure. Our hope is sure. Our hope is certain. And our hope is real. Yeah. Amen. Amen. As opposed to the deception or the deceptive empty false hope that the world gives. Sometimes say, okay, I hope that they win the lottery. I hope nobody here plays lottery. They hope they will win. And the chances of that even happening... Or I hope that something will happen. Or I hope this. But no, the hope that Paul, uh, Peter is referring to here is the hope that never dies. Yes, Christian believers have a living hope because Jesus is alive. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Our hope is based on the solid evidence of Jesus' resurrection. You say, if he had not risen... And is it Paul that, uh, Paul that said in this um, a scripture that we are of all men most miserable? Yes, yes. If he had not risen. But he is alive. Amen. Amen. The Bible tells us that over 500 people witnessed the resurrected Christ. Including the disciples and Paul himself. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We'll not turn to that. Seeing the, res uh, the, um, seeing the re resurrected Christ changed their lives. Those who have been born again have a living hope through the new life in Christ Jesus. Amen. This constantly living hope is that death is not the end. Amen. This hope is that death is not the end. Our brother has gone, that's not the end. When we die, it's not the end. You see, there was a story. Um, a man had a checkup. And then went in to see um, his doctor to get the results. The doctor said he'd better sit down. That he had bad news and worse news for him. Then the doctor asked the man, what do you want to hear first? The man was a bit puzzled and said he'd rather hear the bad news first. The doctor said, the bad news is that you have only 24 hours to live. When the man heard that, the man jumped up, totally shocked. He paced back and forth and said, 24 hours to live? I can't possibly get my affairs in order that quickly. I can't believe that. What could be possibly be the worst news then? The doctor said, well, the worst news is that I was supposed to tell you this yesterday, <laughs> but I forgot. <laughs> you see, death is certain. But so is the Christian's hope of eternal life. Amen. amen. Can I hear an amen, church? Amen. The Christian's hope is in Christ and is as certain and as sure as the fact that Christ is alive. Because Jesus rose from the grave, we know that death is not the end. We know evil does not win. We know that God forgives. We know that the blood cleanses and protects. We know a new life is an option. We know a better future tomorrow is coming. Can I hear an amen? amen. Another song. Because he lives. Sing with me. I can face tomorrow because he lives. Come on now. All fear is gone because I know my future.
pleasure and life is worth a living just because he lives amen because he lives we can face tomorrow you might be listening to this and thinking but my life is over no your life is not over because jesus lives you can face tomorrow hallelujah For much of recorded history, many have been unsure of whether there is really life after death. Even today, many claim that this life is all that there is. You know, there are some religions that think that, oh, when, I, when they die, they will change into something else. So they become a food worm or they become a cow or they become something else. But the fact that Jesus rose we now have a hope in the certainty that one day we too will rise again. Can I hear an amen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We too will live again. Amen. Yeah. The Bible calls Jesus the firstborn from the dead. Amen. Yeah. We also will rise because he rose. I told you when I was preparing this, a lot, a lot of hymns were coming to mind. Up from the great, how many of us know that? Up from the grave, he arose with a mighty triumph of all his foes. He arose the victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with the... Where are my choir people? Come on. He arose, he arose, hallelujah, Christ arose. Amen. Give, give yourselves a round of applause. Hallelujah. Clap, clap like you believe that. I want you to clap like you believe that. Clap like you believe that. Hallelujah. Amen. We have a living hope. We have a living hope. Hallelujah. Because of Jesus' resurrection, we have a certain hope that even if we die, one day we will live again. Hallelujah. Not only do we have a living hope, we have, my second point, a future hope. Hallelujah. We have a future hope. Our hope includes the promise of a better tomorrow. Yes. Hallelujah. Verse 4. Let's go back to verse 4. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 4. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you can i hear an amen, amen. Hallelujah. hallelujah you see we have a promise not only of living again but also a better tomorrow we have the hope of a future inheritance here is another certainty we will die and we will gain a better inheritance the heavenly inheritance is better than any and everything the world has to offer any and everything the world has to offer, the heavenly inheritance is better than that. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. Amen. This inheritance is imperishable. Yes. Come on now. Amen. It's imperishable. Uncorrupted. Yes. Hallelujah. Is it when God does something, he does it good. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Yes. It is unfading. And it is kept in heaven for us. Yeah. Banked. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is banked. It, nothing touches it. It's not Bank of Scotland. No, no, no. It's not in any of the banks of this earth. It's in the bank of heaven. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. I love that. Thank you, brother. It's banked. Yeah. <laughs> kept in heaven for us. And it is kept for those who know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Amen. It's not for everyone. It's not for everyone. It's for those who know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Amen. It's not automatic. Oh no, it's not automatic. If you believe in Jesus, if you confess, if you have confessed him as Lord, he is yours. Amen. But if you are here today and you haven't received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you can say, Jesus... You died for me. And I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Amen. Bam. That's it. If you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that the Lord Jesus rose from the grave, you shall be saved. Amen. It's by believing. 
Hallelujah. Not by going to church. Not by attending uh, mass. No, no, no. It's by believing in Jesus Christ, the one true God. Hallelujah. You see, there was a classic novel um, um, about a young boy living in deep poverty with his mother in America. Now, he um, he, um, found out that his father was a member of the British noble um, family. So the boy's grandfather sends for him. And the boy soon finds himself living in a fine estate in England. He is also, he also found out that he is the heir to the estate, which includes the title of Lord. Now, this is our story as well as believers. Through Jesus Christ, we have gone from having nothing, get ready for this, to having everything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! We have gone from having nothing to having everything. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Everything. We have new life. Yeah. We have new hope. Yes. We have an internal inheritance in heaven that nothing can destroy. Yes. Look at um, Thomas Cook. 176 years. Is, it, is that right? Is, is, is 78 years that has been going all of a sudden, boom, just like that. That's why our hope is not in what we see. It's in heaven. Banked. Amen. Hallelujah. People who have an inheritance like this are called heirs. We are joint heirs. Hallelujah. The scripture says that we are joint heirs with Christ. And being an heir only has value if the person living the inheritance has something of value to give. You see, we are so blessed. We are so blessed because the Bible says that we are heirs of God. Romans chapter 8 verse 17. Put that on the screen for us. Let's read that together. Romans chapter 8 verse 17. Hallelujah. And if children, then heirs. Heirs of God. Joint heirs with Christ. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Woohoo! I'm a joint heir with Christ. Say to yourself, I'm a joint heir with Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. If indeed we suffer with him, then we may also be glorified together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This means that all that God has is ours. Heaven itself is part of that inheritance. Amen. 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 Heaven is part of that inheritance. Our future home where all that is wrong on earth will be set right. All that is wrong on earth will be set right. And we will enjoy God's presence forever. Amen. 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 We will enjoy God's presence. In his presence is the fullness of joy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So how did we get in on something so good? How did we get in something, on something so good like that? It's because we have a good God. Yeah. Hallelujah. He's a good, good father. Yes. Can I hear an amen? amen? He's a good, good father. Yes. Though it cost him what he valued most, the life of his sinless son, who died for our sins, to make us his heir, Jesus paid the price for our salvation on the cross. And his resurrection guaranteed that someday we will come into our full inheritance in heaven. Amen. Amen. Here on earth, estates can change in value over time and even lose value. Buildings and other properties that are part of an inheritance can become run down if they are not maintained. But there is no such problem with our inheritance in heaven. Amen. Amen. Peter used three distinct terms to put his point across. The things that God has in store for those who love him will never perish, will never spoil, and will never fade away. That is, our inheritance can't be destroyed. It's banked in heaven. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our inheritance cannot be destroyed. And it won't be decay like a piece of overripe fruit. It wouldn't fade like a, an old shirt 
that has been watched too many times. Even though the Christian life is often, often includes fairy trials, the outcome is assured in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? Looking at these three terms combined to describe the permanence of our inheritance can never perish. Indestructible. Romans chapter 1 verse 23. Let's look at that together. Romans 1 23. Romans chapter 1, verse 23. And change the glory of God, incorruptible God, into the image, into an image made like corruptible man. Verse 23, okay. And birds and four footed animals and creeping things. I think I'm just going to do. Can I have verse 21? Let's go back up. I do apologize. First Peter. <laughs> Hello. First Peter. Chapter 1. Verse 23. I do apologize. Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible. Yeah. Through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have been born again with incorruptible seed, the word of God. And that's why we need to live the word of God. That's why we need to meditate on the word of God. That's why we need to, the word of God to be planted in the soil of our hearts. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah, because the word of God will never fail. No matter the trials that we go through, it's the word of God that sustains us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Being co heirs with Jesus Christ means we have an inheritance reserved and kept in heaven for us. Galatians chapter 5 verse 5 tells us that we through the spirit eagerly wait for the hope of um, righteousness by faith. Hallelujah. I'll read another scripture. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. It says, Eyes have not seen, nor ears heard, nor has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those that love him. But he has revealed them through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yet the deep things of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. What place was he referring to? The place of heaven. That where he is, that we may be there also. What a time that will be. Hallelujah. And that calls for praise on our part. Hallelujah. Amen. Our Christian hope allows us to see our hope in the future, more, in the future, most positive of ways. Just like we've heard in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 to 10. So it should produce the most positive result in our present lives. Hallelujah. Another story, several years ago, um, in a magazine, um, it carried a story about um, a self-made millionaire. Um, he had, um, he actually wanted to eagerly change the lives of um, students in a certain class. So he went to the head teacher and he asked him that he would like to speak um, to um, this set of students who were really, really um, falling in their grades. And he said, said, what can I say to make a difference in the lives of these students, most of whom were eventually dropped out of school? He wondered how he could get these kids from broken homes in this slump neighborhood to even look at him. When he arrived at the school and stood before the class of innocent faces, he scrapped his notes and decided to speak from his heart. He told them, stay in school, he admonished. I'll help pay the college tuition fee for every one of you. At that moment, the lives of these students changed forever. For the first time, they had hope. One of the students said, I had something to look forward to. Something waiting for me. It was a golden feeling. And what happened? Nearly 90% of that class went on to graduate from high school. That's the power of hope. And what God offers to
to us is more fabulous than anything even the millionaire can offer to you. It's more, it's more greater. Not only we have a living hope, we have a future hope, but also we have a present hope, point three. We have a present hope. Let's look at uh, verse five and six. First Peter chapter one, verse five and six. First Peter chapter one, verse five and verse six. Who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Hallelujah. Verse 6, in this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. Hmm. Because of our living hope, we can place our faith in God's protection, as he tells us in verse 5. It says, who are kept by the power of God through faith. We are kept by the power of God. We are kept by the power of God. We are kept by the power of God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. We are protected by the power of God through faith. For a salvation ready to be, be, be revealed in the last time. Not only is this inheritance guarded, but as who have been born into that inheritance are shielded by God's power. Hallelujah. We are shielded by his power. Amen. God has promised to shield us with his power as we walk by faith in him. As we begin to walk by faith, not by sight, our protection is guaranteed. What greater hope can be given to those undergoing persecution or trials that the knowledge of God's power guides them from within? This was what Peter was trying to tell the, 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 the believers, and it's the same thing for us too. We might be going through trials and temptations and persecutions and deep sorrow. However, it's recognizing that God is with us. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. God's power guides them from within to preserve them for an inheritance of salvation that will be completely revealed to them in, his, in God's presence. Believers possess salvation now, but will experience its full significance at the return of Christ in the last time. Amen. Amen. This final step or ultimate completion of the salvation of our souls, as it says, tells us in 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 9, will come when Jesus Christ is revealed. Notes from this that we are kept by the power of God. Amen. It's not us holding on to him. No, he is the one holding on to us. Amen. Can I hear an amen? amen? He's the one holding on to us. I mean, sometimes I would say like, you know, like little children, we tell our children, hold daddy's hand or hold mommy's hand as we cross the street. But sometimes, even if they, even if they forget to hold us, we are holding on to them. Isn't that right? The same thing, God is holding on to us. And we can be assured that he will not let go. Yes. Hallelujah. We are protected by his power. Yes. We are protected by his power. Can I hear an amen? amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Sometimes, you know, we fear, you know, because of the, the, the trials and the situations that we go through. And sometimes, you know, um, some people, because of, um, you know, uh, trying to... Um, Sometimes all of us has fallen short of that, that we try to do things with our own effort. You know, we try to work or we try to, um, you, know, um, you know, serve God with, in our own might and in our own strength. But the scripture said it's not by power. It's not by might. It's by his spirit. Amen? Amen. Sometimes we are trying to hang uh, on through our effort or through our own spirituality. And we get disgusted with ourselves and are worried that we are not going to make it. But if we just let go of the rope, if we just let go and rest in what Jesus Christ has already done Amen. on the cross of Calvary, we would realize that it's not our effort, but it's by the power of the living God. Amen. 
And this is what Peter is trying to tell the believers in this passage. Who no doubt were wondering if when the temperament rose and the persecution came down, they were, whether they'll be able to handle it. But we can handle it. No matter the persecution or the trials that we might be going through, we can handle it. Because we have Jesus. Hallelujah. Because he's the one holding on to us. Hallelujah. For I know the thoughts and the plans I have towards you. Plan to prosper you, to give you a hope and a future. Amen. So let's hold on to that. That we have an inheritance waiting for us that can't be taken away from us. Hallelujah. That we are kept by the power of God and that God is committed to us. God is committed, even if we abide faithless. The scripture said, he abides faithful. He abides faithful. He's committed to us. And all we have to do is to believe. That I must walk the works of him that sent me. All we have to do is to believe. The one who has called me is faithful. I might be going through persecution. God is faithful. All I have to do is to believe that, Lord, it is only for a season. It's only a season. It will come and it will pass. Hallelujah. Verse 6 again. It says, in this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. You see, verse 6 indicates that a living hope also results in present joy. In this you greatly rejoice, even though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been distressed by various trials. In this likely, it refers to the truth mentioned in verse 3 to 5. Peter encourages the, the believers to put their knowledge into practice. Their response, if they truly grasp the tremendous truth taught to them, is that they would greatly rejoice. You see, knowledge alone cannot produce the great joy in the face of persecution. Christians are responsible to respond in faith. Yes. We are to respond in faith. Hallelujah. And faith turns sound doctrine into sound practice. Hallelujah. Um, 1 John chapter 5 verse 4 tells us that this is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith. It's our faith that makes us overcomers. And we have the faith of the son of God. Hallelujah. So we have it. We've got it. You've got what it takes. No matter the persecution, no matter the trials, we've got what it Tell your neighbor, you've got what it takes. Tell the person, you've got what it takes. Hallelujah. We've got the faith of the Son of God living on the inside of us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The scripture says that what can separate us from the love of God? What can separate us from the love of God? Is it tribulation? Is it distress, persecution, or trials? Yet in all these things. Come on now. In all these things. Hallelujah. Where are my Bible students? In all these things, we are more than? Conquerors. Hallelujah. We are more than conquerors. Hallelujah. Through him who loved us. Faith works by love. When we know that we are loved by God, you can take on anything. Hallelujah. No matter what comes our way, we can take it on because we know we are loved by God. Hallelujah. Faith enables our living hope. It's enabled by our living hope and can cause us as believers to rejoice even though we are called to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. Peter is stressing that a Christian's joy is independent of circumstances. Our joy is independent of circumstances. Even James says, count it all joy when you fall into all kinds of trial. The trials themselves are seen as an occasion for joy. James chapter 1 verse 2. Though trials may cause temporary grief, they cannot diminish that deep abiding joy which is rooted in one's living hope in Christ Jesus. Amen. Can I hear an amen? Amen. 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 Notice that the verse says, if necessary or if needs be, you have been distressed. So suffering is necessary. Tell your neighbor, we will suffer. Yes. 
We, 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 Jesus said, <laughs> what did Jesus say? He said, we're going to, you know, be of good cheer. All that we live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Not for being a gossip, a, a, a busybody in you know, other men's business. Not by being a busybody. No. But we'll suffer for our faith. Amen. We will suffer. But the person who suffers will grow stronger if he or she is attentive to what God is saying. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a quote by um, C.S. Lewis. It says, God whispers in our pleasures, but he shouts in our pains. So the Lord sometimes must force us by means of distress to pay attention to his voice. While such times of testings aren't pleasant, we must wait patiently for him to accomplish his purpose. If we refuse to become bitter, we will learn the priceless lesson of grace that adversity can bring. Amen. Amen. Those who accept trouble graciously grow rich by their losses. They rise by their falls and find new life in Christ by dying to self. Amen. We all must, if we're going to see the life of Christ in us, we need to die to self. Anything suffered in the body can profit the soul. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, the word distressed is the same word that was described when Jesus felt, what Jesus felt in the Garden of Gethsemane. When the sweat, when he sweat great drops of blood. So Peter isn't demin um, minimizing the reality of what his readers were fearing or feeling. What we are going through may be distressful, he says, but it's only for a season. It's only temporarily. Hallelujah. Heaven is eternal, so greatly rejoice. Hallelujah. Heaven is eternal, so we need to greatly rejoice. Hallelujah. Rejoice, rejoice. Christ is in you, the hope of glory in our hearts. He lives, he lives, his breath is in you. Amen. Hallelujah. We arise. Amen. God is good. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm just going to give one more example. Think of it, let's think of it this way. Say you go to the airline counter at the airport and the ticket agent says, your flight to, let's say Tenerife, is on time, but there, there's been some turbulence and we absolutely guarantee that you will get there. However, okay, some of you know where this is going. Our plane is in great shape, but our pilot is fully qualified. But you might experience a few bumps, but you are going to get there just fine. Some of us will say, okay, hang on to my ticket. You'll probably go to another counter and, you know, um, to another flight attendant and say, okay, um, flight to Tenerife. The, uh, the attendant will respond, you know, in this way. We guarantee you'll have a smooth ride, no bumps, no jilts, no air sickness. We guaranteed smooth sailing all the way. It's the landing we're not sure about. <laughs> We're not sure about the land. You see, our, our landing gear is not working quite right. We seem to have problems with occasional landings. All the brakes haven't been serviced. Um, and we guarantee that the flight will be smooth, even though the landing is a bit iffy. Which one would you go for, one or two? Wow. Okay, there you go. <laughs> so if you have to choose between a smooth flight with a crash landing or a bumpy flight with a safe landing, you'll no doubt opt for the bumpy flight, right? You see, there are those who say, I don't want trials. I don't want persecution. However, that's not what the scripture says. That's life. We're going to face this. Hallelujah. You see, for those of us who believe, who are presently dealing with a few distresses along the way, will make it safe landing in heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, that's what Peter will, was emphasizing over and over again to the believers. That throughout his epistle, he sets our sights on the big picture of heaven. Even in Colossians, it says, If you be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is and is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind and keep it set. Hallelujah. On things above, not on things, above, um, on things below. 
First John chapter 3 tells us, verse 1, it says, What manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called the children of God. Therefore the world does not know us, because it does not know him. Beloved, now are we the children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! We shall be like him, and we shall be as he is. Everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself. Just as he is pure. This is the hope that we have. This is what we need to keep on reminding ourselves about. That no matter what we're going through, Jesus is our living hope. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In closing, Paul, uh, Peter encourages his, um, his readers to trust in Jesus. And in, in, in closing, I'm encouraging us today, each and every one of us, to trust in Jesus. Live obediently in hard times in circumstances and keep your hopes fixed on God's ultimate purpose, his ultimate purpose of deliverance and our heavenly reward. Yes. And those of us who might be feeling discouraged or displaced or distressed or in danger, Peter addresses the issue saying, we have a living hope based on the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. A living hope, meaning that the believer's hope is secure it's real and it's sure. Hallelujah. Yeah. This living hope is the source of our new birth and our living hope. My question this morning is, are you experiencing this new birth? Amen. Do you have this living hope? Amen. And probably you might be wondering, some of us might be wondering, so how can we get this living hope? How can I obtain this living hope? As I mentioned previously, you must be born again. By entrusting yourself and committing yourself to the truth of Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. Yes, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God the Father has offered you a hope that you can have and maintain it by faith. He has done all the impossible parts so that all you must do is surrender your heart and your life to him. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't know if anyone here who hasn't made that commitment, I'd like us to bow down our heads in prayer. If you are listening to this and you haven't made that commitment, I want you to bow down your head in prayer and say this after me. Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart that you were raised from the dead. And this guarantees that your death was sufficient to pay all for all my sins. Therefore, God is for me and not against me. You yourself are alive today and you're alive with me to help me forever. I surrender to you. I pray that you will help me now to fully hope in your promises so that I might have a living hope and a future, a future hope and a present hope in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's clap for Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. In summary, the living Christ is the source of our new birth, of our living hope. If you have a living hope in the living Christ, you can deal with your past failures, your present difficulties because of your future blessings are ahead. Amen. The future is bright. The future is Jesus. Amen. Amen. In closing, now may the God of all hope fill you with joy in with joy and peace in all believing. Romans chapter 5, uh, 15 verse 13. Now may the God of all hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Blessed be the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercies has begotten us to a new and living hope through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's all rise upon our feet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please come around. Pray for us, please. Let's ask Pastor Rupert to come and pray for us. Come on, let's just worship him. Yes. Praise God. We heard last Sunday there is hope. This Sunday we're looking again at the fact that there's a living hope. 
let's let's lift our hands to heaven and let's anchor our soul in the hope that is only provided by Jesus Christ father we thank you we thank you we thank you we bless your holy name father we thank you everyone that is here whose hearts long to see the greatness of God in their life hope in him who are going through some bumpy rides this is the moment let's hope in God he never fails he is an unfailing god his word is alive living powerful eternal there is hope the blessed hope the great hope the present hope the future hope thank you god jesus that you are a hope and i thank you a god with hope comes faith and with faith love love and faith and hope just thank you father for the teaching of god's word thank you for our spiritual daughter linda and for our spiritual son benny and their family we bless them in the name of jesus christ of nazareth Father I pray that you would increase them increase the impact of their life thank you oh god for the word that they brought to us thank you oh god that you have lifted them in this land thank you oh god that you have sent them with the mission accomplish every word that you have spoken to them father i pray that your glory your hope will be revealed in all our hearts that we go out of here knowing there is a hope and that eyes are fixed on eternal shores Amen. that we are not living for earthly gain that we are fixing our eyes on eternal gain Amen. we thank you oh god that our eyes are looking at jesus christ the author and finisher of our faith Hallelujah. and unwaveringly we look at the one who provides us all who is our all in all we thank you for your grace and for your mercy we thank you for the hope that is with us now we are anchoring ourselves in it we love you god we thank you in jesus most holy name Amen. 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 Amen.